Alright, I've been looking forward to this for a while. Car's packed, we're heading to the Isle of Mull. Close your eyes Get some rest I'm by your side Chest. I know you've had early start here in Mall today. Birds are singing. <laughs> it's about 5:30, and I'm gonna head back over to the other side of the island to try and find some otters. Stunning drive out here. The sunrise is amazing. Uh, the clouds have just been popping pink on the way over here. So, it's such a nice drive. I'm just going to start right here. I got a good view of this shoreline up and down here. So I got my got my coffee with me, and it's just kind of comfortable to just be able to sit in the car this early in the morning and just kind of look out to the shore. There's a lot, it's a lot quieter today as well. The sea is quiet, so there's not that much waves. So it'll be a lot easier to spot an otter that might be swimming or hunting out at sea. So that's the plan. And I'm just gonna get my bins, start scanning, and I'm gonna spend about five minutes here or something like that, and then head on to the next layby and do the same thing. So hopefully, this time we'll get to see an otter. Last time I was off for about five, Five hours I think and I didn't see a single otter a bit disappointing but that's that is part of the wildlife photography experience and I had an amazing time just being out and about and just watching kind of just sitting along the shore and uh, just keeping an eye out for the wildlife that was there so I don't regret it and you never know it might happen the same thing again today so I hope not. I hope we get lucky. We're gonna be okay. Calm your soul. Hold my hand. So I'm not gonna take much with me down there because I like to be quite mobile. I like to be able to kind of stalk up along the beach if I need to. My camera with my 100-400 and I'm putting it in this um, kind of camo waterproof cover and that's just a bit of protection against the elements down there. It's something that protects it just a little bit more. The vlogging camera that I got set up right there and my binoculars of course. Magic invisibility cloak or check out the video that I did for Tragopon um, uh, I almost had an otter walk over me I've never been so close to an otter before in my life um, and I started eating like about a meter a meter and a half right in front of me he just came out of the water with one of those flat fish like a, a place or a flounder whatever it's called um, I only managed to get a couple of shots in uh, I was almost devastated because I didn't even think I got a sharp shot but I got a couple and I'm very happy and the experience itself was just priceless it was absolutely unbelievable I got some gloves I got some waterproof gloves seal skin sir I love these things and they got a leather on the inside as well as the, or the outside here padding so it's really good to maneuver to move about down the shore it's, um, there are a lot of barnacles and things like that on the rocks which kind of makes it get a bit painful if you just move with your bare hands. I'm going to walk down the road, uh, be sure that I'm further downwind and I'll make my way off the shore here 
very very slowly and just continuously scanning the shore and the sea so hopefully i won't run into too many people walking along the road i'll probably get some weird looks i understand I was scanning ahead and I just saw something dive underneath. The bad thing here is I'm on the wrong side of the wind, so I'm going to need to make my way around or go inland, wait for it to pass, and then come out. It's a bit further out now. Keeps diving. I'm just going to keep watching it. See how long it stays under, because that gives me an idea of how much I can move across land when it's under and it won't see me. 25, 26, 27, 28. Alright, that's pretty good. I watched it dive twice now. First time, third, I count to 30. Second time, I counted to, what was that, 28 or 29? It's almost 30 seconds that it stays under. So. I'm gonna wait until it comes up again. Then when it moves, it goes back under again. I want to bolt for the car. There it is. It's quite far out now as well. It's just playing around. Okay, go. <laughs> I'd buy in the car next. Behind the car, but I scared all the gulls up. I don't know how good they are picking up other other animal signals. There it is. Wow. It just went under again. Okay. Make my way down to the shore. I definitely want to be further down this way since the wind is coming from up there. It's basically almost straight out for me now. And I'm just gonna, if it catches something. If it's big enough, it's going to make its way into land to eat it. That looks like a possible good spot for it. Down there. This little outcrop of rocks down there. And seaweed, which makes a good hotting spot. So, I feel like if it's going to catch something, there is a chance that it's going to go there. something soon. I'm gonna watch it dive two more times. Make sure that it stays under for a long time. I'm gonna rock it.
unbelievable experience. I think I caught much, most of this on film. And it was out here hunting at sea. I have to check, I, I lost track of time. I have to check the recording. And here, just over there, it came up to shore. I couldn't tell if it was eating something. I don't think so. I think it was just having a rest and it was kind of um, cleaning its fur a bit. And I think it went up top there and it deposited a little sprint towards the end. This was the perfect wildlife photography experience. I stalked it for probably close to an hour now, if not more. Got some photos, got some footage. Got the whole experience of being this close to it and seeing it in its natural environment. And, and then I managed to leave without it ever knowing that I was there. So, and that's, that's key. That's, that's key for me. That's my, that's what I'm striving for. That's what I want to achieve. I want to be able to take photos of wildlife, get close to them, but not disturb them, not, not have them not even know that I was there. And I don't think I've got any great pictures today, but I would much rather have this kind of experience and not cause any disturbance to the animal than just do whatever just to get a picture. Now the great thing is, it's back out hunting. It never knew I was there. And yeah, that's just perfect. That's the way I want it. Anyways, I'm starving now. As I was stalking the otter down the shore, I left behind by binoculars somewhere down here. I'm not exactly sure where. I think it was close to the car. All right, this is gonna be a nightmare. And it was somewhere along here. Everything's changed a bit as well because the tide has gone out a bit. So I'm not sure where I was. Good stuff. All right, perfect start to the morning. It's about 10.30, so I've been up about four and a half hours, probably up and down the shore here, four hours again. But this time, I had an otter for a really long time. It's interesting now, once I got my eye in, how easy it is to spot it. Obviously, I know where it is, so it's not the same when you come here and you're scanning for it and you don't know where it is. And particularly because it spends about, what did I count, like up to 30 seconds underwater. And when it comes up, it can stay for anything from like just a couple of seconds, like five seconds or something like that. Um, sometimes longer if it's had something to eat, but well, that means that most of the time it's underwater when it's out there. So, obviously that means that if you're coming to a place like this looking for otters, you do actually have to spend quite a bit of time just scanning the ocean. And it, very often just with the naked eye can really help because you pick up these tiny little bits of like just darkness in the water or something and then you put your bins on that to see. Um, and obviously today, it's a very quiet day. Today it's easy. I don't think I would have had a chance the other day when I was here and it was so choppy. I could have easily been an otter right out, uh, right in front of me almost. And I wouldn't have been able to see it just because it had been so choppy. And the small amount of time that it actually spends up, the chance of me seeing it in between the waves, minimal. So definitely good to have a quiet, calm day like this to go out to do this sort of stuff. I love this though, I love this kind of like just learning as I go. Like I have some, I have a bit of knowledge from before and I've read up on things, but you don't really learn these things properly unless you just go do it. And that's what I'm finding here now. Getting so much good experience, like seeing what, what kind of place it lies down to eat at, where it lies down to rest, how much time it spends out to see hunting, how far out it goes, all these tiny little things. Just when you go and experience these things, you just build up that knowledge in your head. And it's just invaluable for 
coming out and doing these things again and again because you just get better at it. You get your eye in for it and you understand a bit more about the otter's life.